Hey Pee Wee Homies, Jay War here with another video. So Sentinel League is ending. Lake of Galandra League is about to start. So what can you do to get ready for 319? A lot of you guys are probably hanging out in standard, don't really want to play standard, want to start getting ready for the new league, maybe you don't know how. Well, I got a few tips and tricks in this video for stuff you can set up, you can do ahead of time that's going to help streamline your league start for 319. So some stuff we're going to talk about is just setting up your live searches, talk about a couple add-ons that are going to help you with that, and then also setting up your Atlas passive tree for maps the same to start. Let's see a lot of people make a mistake and they don't do that correctly on league start. And then one last thing we're going to talk about is just some organizational tips and tricks and some planning you could do ahead of time to have a little bit smoother league start. Some stuff I've done in the past that's helped me with some of the more time consuming parts of the game with all the stuff that you get thrown at you on league start, how to handle it and how to kind of manage it and just make it a little bit easier for yourself as you go about it because we've got all this free time before the league starts so might as well use it making things easier for you down the road. So alright, let's get into it. Alright guys, so we're on the Path of Exile website now and let me just show you guys real quick how to set up a live search and how this could be useful for you at League Launch and how to set up a lot of them and how to bookmark them, right, is something that could be really helpful. So you have to log in to set up a live search and you first also have to do a search to set up a live search. I just did a search so I now have this button here, activate live search. So let's set up a real live search in the league. So the thing that's probably going to be most common now and a bit of a meme, right, is Divine Orb. Let's set up a live search for Divine Orb. As you can see, I typed the new search in and the activate live search has gone away. So I now need to search and then activate live search is going to be available. And now what this is going to do, I'll just show you how it works, is we're now live searching. So every time, and you can hear the... <laughs> the volume is going to ping me, right? So every time we get a trade, somebody puts a trade up on the website, Belton, I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's James Belton. <laughs> anyway, every time someone puts up a Divine Orb sale on the trade website, it's going to ping us. This could be really useful. Obviously, you probably don't want to use it for something like uh, Divine Orb, something that's going to be constantly going off in the league, but you do want to use it for maybe something that you're looking for that's a very niche item for your build, a specific unique that's going to be expensive early on with certain roles or something like that. You can set up a really niche live search to get what you're looking for the second it comes up. And a lot of people do do this, and it's a pretty widely known technique to use for grabbing items. You can kind of snipe items, so to speak, with this if somebody puts it up real low right away. Kind of a scumbaggy thing to do to lowball them an offer on on it uh, but you could get something for pretty cheap you know a lot of times you'll have a reasonable price sometimes people just want to unload stuff quickly and they know they're putting it up for a cheap price so you know at the very least you do want to be competitive with other people that are after these same items and be able to message the person rather quickly for the item that you're interested in because uh, you know it's kind of it's kind of ravenous on league start a lot of people are trying to grab stuff you know and if you can get a little bit of a competitive advantage or at least be in the competition for grabbing an item as soon as it goes up on trade that you're looking for at a good price price it's going to help you out a lot on league start all right guys so we're back on the trade website here and the next thing i want to talk about is this browser extension called better trading and it's this little smiley face with the chaos orb here what does it do well first let's talk about how to get it actually so how you get the better trading browser extension is you just google better trading poe and it's going to pop right up you'll be able to get the browser extension that way so once you have it what does it do well you're able to make these folders and let's just say I wanted to make an occultist folder, let's just call it Aki, uh, chaos dot Aki, right? So now we've got this folder, and you're able to keep track of trades in these folders to organize them, and it's just going to auto search for the trade when you click on it. So how do you register a trade on it? It's really easy to use, guys. Let's say if I'm a chaos dot occultist, I probably want something like a cane of unraveling, right? So right here, we've got the trade up, and now all you do is you register current trade you got to give it a name if you search for something it doesn't have a name say you're searching for just any six link chest and you don't put a name in it's not going to auto give it a name you'll have to give it a name right now when we search for cane of unraveling it's going to just pull up that search every time now this is really convenient for keeping track of all the things you're looking for on a leak start or later in the game it's really convenient for a lot of uses actually but it's especially convenient i would say on leak start so Say, like, for instance, this is an example of something I'm thinking about league starting is Blade Flurry General Scry. Now, I know I'm going to need an Ichimanji Sword, right? So if I want to look for that when I'm ready to buy it, I just click on this. You could also set up your live searches this way, right? You can right-click on it and a live search. And you can set up a whole bunch of tabs using this and just get all your trades up in a different window using all these different live searches, right? That's 
a really, really useful tool for setting up your trades and being efficient about looking for the items you know you're going to need eventually, right? So you can do this ahead of time so you can quickly find all the items that you need for your build. And it's really handy and you can even do things like set up searches for things you want to flip on the market later. Maybe you're doing some flipping, something like that. There's a lot of good use cases for it. So it's definitely a really handy browser extension. You could really go all out with it if you wanted at this point in time. If you want to really get set up for 319 and there's a whole bunch of items you want to keep track of and monitor the market for and all kinds of stuff like that. It's a really great tool for you to use and kind of just, um, you know, the sky's the limit with what you can set up in it ahead of time. All right, guys, and real quick, though, I just want to go over a tool I think everybody should have at this point in PoE, which is just a price checking tool. Everybody should have a price checking tool because we've all seen the new player that comes in the game and they find their first unique item and they post in chat, hey, is this worth anything, right? They're, they're posting some, like, I don't know, some comm sign ring or something. They just found, a, you know, a black, uh, black heart or whatever that unique uh, iron ring is that drops really early on. Anyway, you want to have a price checking tool, and the one I like to use is Awakened PoE. I'll just show you how this works, guys, is you just control D in-game, this thing comes up. Wow, this, like, this bottle of face got really expensive. Anyway, control D in-game, and it's going to give you a price of all the other items on the market that are like it. You can even use it on rare items, say, uh, you know, we're going to look up one of these rings or something. You can click the stats you want to apply to it, right? and you can find out how much your item is worth that way very, very quickly. You don't even have to go on the trade website. Now, it's just at a glance how much it's gonna be worth, and if you really have a special item, you probably wanna look a little, more, a little more into it, but you can actually do things on this tool like just bring up the trade website. If you click on the trade website here, it's gonna bring this up in the game for you uh, without even opening up a separate browser, and then you can browse on the trade website, and it's also gonna auto-fill out a lot of the uh, a lot of the requirements for you and a really handy tool to have and if you don't already have this I know the majority of players probably already have this but you definitely want to get this if you're a new player and you want to see how much items are worth because one of the things that's going to hold you back the most in POE is trying to figure out how much all these items you're picking up off the ground are worth right so make sure you get that I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about this because I know it's very well known in the community by now Alright guys, one other thing I want to talk about here, something that typically slows me down a lot at League Start is trying to figure out where, what all the gems you need are. Like, what are all the gems I need for my build? And it can be kind of time consuming and tedious to go back and forth between in-game and POB and select all the different screens in POB. Not that there's a lot, POB is pretty good, but I like condensing all the information for my skill gems into one single document. And I'll give you an example of what I've done for this league here. Say, for instance, I want to set up into uh, Blade Flare General's Cry from the build I'm doing. Let me pull this up real quick. So, I've set this up for it. All right. So, just a little document I've prepared of looking at the gems I'm going to use in leveling. I'm planning on going from Spectral Helix into Blade Flurry General's Cry. So, I'm going to level with this stuff over here. And these are the basic gem setups I'm going to have for leveling before I go into maps and stuff. And then eventually, I'm going to want to switch to this. So, when I'm ready to switch, this is all the stuff I need to have, and this is all the stuff I need to be acquiring in the axe, right? So it's really nice to have this stuff I found in a condensed form of information, and I found this to be one of the more tedious parts of management in the game that you have to get out of the way and deal with when you're starting a new character. So I found it really helpful for me to set up like a nice, uh, and all I did really here is I just control copy, and by the way, you guys don't know how to do it, you should just uh, Windows Shift S which is going to allow you to cut out a portion and this gets copied to your clipboard and then you just paste it into paint and you can make a nice list like I did here, right? I just copied these out of Path of Building and pasted them into a MS Paint file and then kind of just added some text and some organization to it, right? To see all my old skill links, all my new skill links, this is what we're doing, right? So. I found this really helpful. Um, it's a maybe a little bit overkill, but hey, if you're really bored and you really want to streamline your league start, you could do something like this. It's going to help you out a lot. You know, I put red X's here to drop these gems eventually, and then, you know, green plus signs here when I add these gems into our links. And it's just really helpful, especially if you're transitioning from one skill gem to another and changing up the playstyle of your build quite a lot, and you're going to be replacing a lot of gem sockets. It's really helpful to have all this stuff in a condensed 
information state just so you can at a glance see what you're doing and then look back into the actual in-game client and make those changes rather than messing around with POB and you know you're like okay well I'm going from this to this I'm dropping this you know it's something you can set up for yourself going to 319 again we have a lot of time here might as well make things easier for yourself once 319 starts with something like this. Alright guys, so the last thing I wanted to go over in this video is how to set up your Atlas passive tree early on and everybody should have a pretty good idea of what they're doing with their early points and for new players I wanted to especially make this point because you want to grab map sustain stuff first and foremost. I see a lot of new players running into this trouble and uh, you know this could be useful advice for returning players uh, that just you know haven't played in a couple leagues, haven't seen the new Atlas passive skill tree and how to do a map sustain on the new Atlas passive skill tree. So so basically, this maps have a 15% chance to be one tier higher. Nodes are absolutely key. You want to go for these first and foremost. That's going to allow you to get the most maps to stay. You can also go for Kirak missions. Additional maps to run through Kirak missions are going to help you fill out your atlas. And then also, you want to go for the Shaping the Valleys and Shaping the Seas, which also are going to have maps have a 15% chance to be one tier higher. Grabbing both of them might be overkill at that point once you get everything else, but uh, I'd probably grab both of them just to fill out my atlas to start out with. And once you have that, you can start branching out into some other stuff, but we'll just go over a couple of routes to take here. Myself, I'm thinking about doing some expedition early, so I might go this way and then up and over. Uh, I think the fastest path from the beginning is just straight up here, maybe. And then you could kind of rush your Kirak mission if you want to get... Uh, you probably wouldn't go that way. I think you go this way. Uh, I don't know if it really matters, honestly. I'm not going to look into that right now. But anyway, you can go this way to get your Kirak mission early. But then the first, you definitely want to grab these two wheels right off the bat. So whether you go this way, you can grab some... Al Alba missions here on map completion start uh, you know stocking up on some Alba missions early if you want that you can come this way the most straightforward way is right up the middle or you can go this way if you want to grab something like expedition early just depends really any number of these ways but you want to kind of get to this central point branch out and get these two wheels and then you also want to work your way up to get these two now if you don't get these you're probably going to have trouble with map sustain this is my recommendation for what you do with your early atlas passive skill tree because the whole goal is guys what these atlas passive skill points do for you guys that might be new players don't know basically every atlas passive tree skill point is going to allow you or it's going to make your maps more rewarding it's going to give you more for your maps right so the first thing you want to do is you want to have more maps to run Right? That's what you want to set your Atlas passive skill tree up to do for you. You want to give, make it give you more maps until you've got your Atlas passive skill tree completed. And one of the reasons, if you guys don't know, is the Void Stones in game, actually, and I think I'm, I'm logged in here, I could show you. Uh, they actually also have maps have 25% chance to drop one tier higher. So once you get all those, then you can start specking out of some of these nodes where maps have 15% chance to be one tier higher. And the way this reads, guys, is it says have chance to be one tier higher when they drop, but it actually adds more chance to drop as well. And it doesn't really read like that, but that's what it does. So that's why you want to grab all those more, because you essentially have a 15% more chance to get another map with each one of these right and i'm pretty sure that's the way it works someone can correct me if that's wrong in the comments but i do know that you're getting all these notes early greatly improves your map sustain so definitely recommend doing something like this route first and grabbing all these notes and then starting to branch out to get like your um you know your league mechanic map juicing stuff later on once you've got your atlas pretty well started to fill out right and you're having good map sustain you're not really worried about getting more maps i see a lot of new players run into this problem and they say like oh i'm on tier four or five maps and i just i can't get any more maps to drop well it's because they didn't set up their atlas passive tree like this to start out with right so this is the first thing you want to do setting up your atlas passive tree so when you go into 319 and you get your at you get to maps i know it's overwhelming you have a lot of stuff to do you're worried about your build you're worried about all the other stuff you got to do get your build set up you know a lot of people don't think about where they're going to go on the Atlas passive tree first. Well, make sure you get map sustain first and foremost, because that's going to allow you to get more maps and fill your Atlas nice and easy, and you're not going to run into any problems doing that at the start of the league. So, all right, that was probably the last thing I wanted to talk about here. And yeah, I think we've gone over a lot of pretty good tips here, I think, for league starting, and that's going to do it. So thanks for watching, guys.